Welcome to this screencast on configuring MySQL mapping with the SQL Schema Mapper. From previous screencasts, you'll have seen how to create a MySQL database instance in AWS and how to create the required databases and fields. You'll also have seen how to map the interaction fields coming from the Datasift platform to the fields in the database with an INI file like this one here. In this screencast, I'll show you how to configure those mappings graphically within the Datasift web application. Let's start by looking at the current configuration. I have a MySQL instance configured in AWS called Screencast. You can see the endpoint here, and you can see the database name. I've already created the tables and fields I want in the database. To see them, I'll connect to the database using a graphical database management application called Heidi SQL. Under the first DB database, you can see there are two tables, hashtags and Twitter. If I click on the Twitter table, you can see it has fields with data types configured, and so does the hashtags table. So the next step is to configure the Datasif platform to send filtered interactions to this database and make the correct field mappings. From the destinations page in the web application, find MySQL and click the plus symbol. For this instance, I'll use a label of screencast and I'll copy and paste the instance endpoint into the host field. I can leave the port field blank because I'm using the default port and my database name is first underscore db. Now we come to the SQL schema mapper. I'll start by creating the database tables. I could just paste in the same SQL commands that I used to create the tables by clicking here. But I'll create the tables by hand so you can see how it's done. Start by clicking the Add Table button and type in the table name. My first table was called Twitter. And I'll add all the fields that I have in the Twitter table. Now I have a representation of the table, I can choose which fields from the Datasift platform get mapped to those database fields. I'll click Add Target and type in the fields which would usually be found in the JSON output from the platform. I'm going to need interaction.id. You can see where an output field happens to also be a target, it auto-completes the name. This one doesn't autocomplete because it's not a target, but it is a valid output field so I can use it. Now I can simply drag connectors where I want the fields to be mapped. You may remember from the previous screencast on writing any files that you can change data types and add transforms. I need to make sure that created at is in a date time format and is transformed to however the database represents date times. I can do this by clicking the configuration icon on the connector. The next table I'm going to create is a little more complicated because it uses a list iterator. It has to iterate one or more hashtags in an interaction. I'll start by creating the table with the name hashtags to match what we have in the database. And I'll add the fields. Now I can add the interaction fields that need to be mapped.
I'll drag the connectors. And I'll set the data type and transform again on the created at time. To add the iterator to this table, I click the configuration icon. And in this case, it's going to be a list iterator. Now I need to select which interaction output field to iterate on. In this case, it's interaction.hashtags. I can drag this onto my group of output fields and connect to the hashtag database field. That's the mapping complete. I can even preview how this mapping would look as an any file. The final fields to complete are the username and password. I'll test the connection. This test also validates that the mappings are correct. The test has worked, so now I'll create and activate. To test this new database destination, I'll start a quick recording to send interactions to the database. I'll start now and keep the filter running. I'll choose Screencast MySQL as my destination and click Start Task. While the task is starting, let me show you the database. Looking at the Twitter table, there's currently no data. If I go back to my task, I've got some interactions there now, so I'll hit pause. And I'll go and look in my database. If I look in the Twitter table, you can see the table is populated with interaction fields. If I look at the hashtags table, you can see the interaction fields with the hashtags. Thanks for watching this screencast on SQL Schema Mapper. Keep an eye out for other screencasts covering the other destinations.